Hello everyone, and welcome back to PokePaint, the series where I draw new Fakemon to inhabit my fan-made Pokemon region based on Florida, the Gladius region. My original concept for this video was that it was going to be my Halloween special, um, as today I'm going to make some Pokemon that could be used by the evil team for my region. But since I was working on several projects throughout October, including the realistic 151 Pokemon that I made for that month, and a prop build video that you'll see probably next week or the week after. I haven't talked about it publicly, but I've had a concept for an evil team for Gladios for quite a while now. Before I tackle the designs here, I'll bring everyone up to speed about what I am going for here, as it will give greater context to the designs that I'm going to tackle today. I, like many other young adult Pokemon fans remember and prefer the evil teams from the first five generations of Pokemon. Teams that had an overtly evil scheme and posed an actual threat in the story. This is opposed to the more recent regions who largely consist of more joke characters making for goofier, lighter hearted villains. And even though personally I don't prefer that kind of villain in my Pokemon games, it would be ignorant to say that they don't have a place. So I thought it would be a fun challenge, after the more serious evil teams that have made in the last two seasons, to tackle one of these less serious evil teams. Especially since when you think about it, a less serious team kind of complements a Florida region very well. It parallels the famously goofy uh, Florida man and Florida crime articles uh, that for some reason seem to pour out of that state specifically. So the concept for my evil team is this. <clears throat> team Freedom, yeah, I know, uh, is a loose, vaguely criminal organization that plagues the Gladios region. Though it's more of a social movement that attempts to fight against a system that it feels discourages individuality. A system that a lot of people in Gladios don't even feel really exists in the first place. They're basically hippies, or some sort of youth fad. A sort of hybrid of the don't tread on me types and the hipster e fight the system type movements uh, that were popular across America throughout history, including Florida. It also takes inspiration from real life cultural movements while not being a parody of any of them. If anything, they could be considered analogous to the greater public's relationship with these movements. But definitely don't take it as a commentary on it. Uh, more than anything, these will mostly be intended to be fun characters to move the plot along. That is, except for the evil team leader. He might have more sinister intentions, uh, but I will save my idea for him for a later video. <clears throat> for the Pokemon in this video, I wanted to draw two lines that would act as the ace Pokemon for some of the evil team admins, since the evil team's quote-unquote goals would be in the vein of individual expression more than any real goals, I thought that creating two characters with concepts related to self-expression through types of art would be a fun idea. The first line of the video is based on traditional art. Uh, think drawing, painting, etc. The concept was that it would be based on a grackle and that it would use its tail as a paintbrush along the lines of Smeargle. Grackles are small, smart blackbirds that can be found in Florida, and although they are not in the corvid family, they are often mistaken for them, due to their resemblance and similar behavior to crows and ravens. During my trip to Florida this year is actually when I came up with this idea for both of the Pokemon in, these, in this video. Whenever I visit Florida, at least in the Orlando area, uh, these animals are almost unavoidable. Like, grackles are absolutely everywhere, and at least whenever I imagine Florida, I often think about these funny little birds. When drawing grackle art, I wanted to capture the aura of the that these creatures have by exaggerating their skinny features and simplifying the body. I wanted the colors to be dark like the real creature and sort of difficult to discern, but I also wanted to reference the pearlescent texture that their feathers have by giving a blue and purple tinge to the belly and wings respectively. I did not divide the beak from the face on purpose as an exaggeration of how these animals look in real life. Due to their dark colors, it's sort of hard to tell where the beak ends and the feathers begin. Gracklart, the painting Pokemon. They can be found in populated areas and are friendly, if not slightly mischievous, Pokemon. They are attracted to shiny objects and will make off with coins and precious stones. 
Highly intelligent, they are known for creating complex images resembling artistic paintings with their brush-like tail that secretes an ink-like fluid that changes consistency depending on their diet. Trainers, be warned that their tail fluid stains. I wanted Gracklart to have a branched evolution as I don't seem to have very many of these in the region so far besides for the fire ant line. Both sides of the evolutionary tree would, re would resemble career paths when it came to art, uh, with one resembling the official path, that being career painters, animators, concept artists, and designers, uh, while the other would resemble the non-traditional art like graffiti. This form would represent the classical artist path. Its body would resemble a career artist with feather patterns that represent Renaissance era clothes. It would paint with not only its tail but with its wingtips, communicating more of a mastery over its art form. It also references finger painting. Uh, something that I didn't include in my Pokedex that I think would be a fun concept would be in relation to their footprints. While most Pokemon do have footprints as indicated by the Pokedex, uh, <clears throat> I imagine that this Pokemon might uh, leave little paint-covered footprints around uh, as it walks. Uh, much of both of these evolutions I designed with their relationship with their trainer in mind, as I feel the ways that people would live with these creatures in this fantasy setting uh, is an interesting concept that, Pokemon, that the Pokemon Company has explored before, but that I really want to see more of. Gracastro, the painting Pokemon in the evolved form of Gracklart. When a Gracolart finds a Dawnstone, it will evolve into a Gracastro. Very popular with professional artists due to their cleanliness and technical skill, they can paint better than many pro artists. They are more common in captivity, but when they are found in the wild, it is most often in small flocks. These flocks will be active during the day and will find discarded objects to paint on. They are sworn enemies with their evolutionary, with their evolutionary relative Graffitivid and will paint over Graffitivid tags in a vie for territory. Areas where the art of the Grackle Art line can be found in abundance are most often areas where the territories of the evolved forms overlap. The other branched evolution represents graffiti art and is one of my favorite designs that I've done for the region so far. But that might also just because combining two of my greatest interests, that being art and birds, honestly has every right to be a slam dunk when it comes to what kind of Pokemon designs I prefer. This Pokemon is designed with the tropes of graffiti artists and, and juvenile delinquency in mind. Uh, that's of course not to say that that's how I see graffiti, as especially today there's a strong draw for official graffiti artists to create tags and murals for businesses and property owners, but I designed the beak and neck to resemble closely the masks that artists often wear when working with spray paint, um, as to not inhale the fumes. I also created a pattern that resembled uh, reverse bangs popping out from under a hoodie, uh, which combines juvenile delinquent stereotypes from both America with the hoodie and Japan with rebellious hairstyles like that that are common with the rebellious side of the youth. I also tried to give the legs a resemblance to saggy pants, and although I did a low dark pattern, uh, I don't think it's overtly obvious. I thought it would be a cool idea to have this Pokemon's paint resemble spray paint uh, that it could expel from its wingtips to further differentiate it from the other two designs. Graffitivid was the name that I gave it before I learned that these Pokemon were not in fact Corbids, but I liked the name so much that I decided to keep it. Graffitivid, the painting Pokemon and the evolved form of Gracklark. When a Gracolart finds a Dusk Stone, it will evolve into a Graffitivid. They gather in flocks of three to six and patrol an area of land that they have claimed as their own. They only come out at night. The tips of their wings produce a fluid most similar to aerosol paint in its consistency and usage. You can tell uh, when a flock of Graffitivid inhabit your area as they will create beautiful murals on empty surfaces, especially on cars which are their favorite. 
They mark more often when they feel that others have intruded on their territory, especially their, swarm and their sworn enemy, Grecastro. They are more popular with graffiti artists for their creative style. The other line that I made for the second evil team admin would represent the idea of self-expression through music. Another common stereotype in rebellious youth is both listening to music on headphones and listening to music that, that their parents maybe don't approve of, which is maybe in the modern day less of a common thing. However, the concept, however, the concept still exists pretty heavily in our media. <clears throat> this Pokemon was inspired by an invasive bug species found in Florida called a boll weevil. This is another animal I saw during my trip when I, and when I saw their snouts, I immediately had the image in my head of one playing an instrument like a clarinet or a saxophone. So put the most simply, the concept ended up being a bull weevil whose snout is a musical instrument. But as can often be the case, even though the concept may be super simple, I went through many variations of this design before I found one that I liked. In fact, this may be the longest I've ever spent designing a Pokemon ever uh, since I began drawing it in June and came up with the idea in May. In fact, uh, it was meant to appear in the same video as the carapace line. Um, I finally settled on one with, the, with a swirl pattern for its eyes and a pattern that resembles the bull weevil stripes, also resembling vaguely a pinstripe suit with coattails for wings. Uh, even though bull weevils and crickets are not related so whatsoever, I still liked the idea that this Pokemon, being a musical bug of sorts, would fill the same role as a cricket in the wilds of Gladios, coming out at night to play their music. <clears throat> in real life, bull weevils are an invasive species, uh, which is why they are so common in Florida, and is another reason why I chose this for the evil team Pokemon. Uh, the way invasive species take over and become pests for the native species of a real-world region is pretty similar behavior to the concept of an evil team, an organization that doesn't belong and has different goals than the populace, setting up shop with nobody to keep them in check. Well, at least until a ten-year-old with a dragon shows up, but that's where the similarities end. Bullyugle's name comes from Bullweevil and Bugle. Bullyugle, the beetle Pokemon. Haha, <laughs> see what I did there? They wander around and create whimsical noises using the horn on their snout. Alone, their sounds are disorganized, but in a group, their calls combine to create wonderful music. Originally from a far-off region, the lack of predators capable of surpassing their ability to lull their opponents to sleep means that they have come to overpopulate the region. Although they can be found at all times of the day, they come out in droves during the night. <clears throat> The final form, paradoxically, came about a lot faster than Bulyugal did, uh, but that's probably because I had a stronger base to start from. With Orchestraval, uh, whose name comes from a combination of orchestra and weevil, the main trait that I had in mind was giving it a saxophone. I don't know how a saxophone is an evolution of a bugle exactly, but I guess in this case I simply just liked the shape for the silhouette. I curled up the wings to even further resemble, resemble coat tails, uh, which yes, bull weevils don't have wings, but it was too fun of an opportunity to miss. Uh, I extended the collar to make it look more extravagant and used the antenna to create a shape that at least partially resembles a curled mustache. The other trait I added was giving it another set of arms. Not only do bull weevils have six arms in the real world, uh, but this gives uh, this Pokemon a whimsical appearance due to their many arms uh, playing the saxophone. Orchestraval, the beetle Pokemon, and the evolved form of Bullyugle. You will more often than not find an Orchestraval with a line of Bullyugle marching behind. This is because Bullyugle seek them out to lead them in song. As they march, they create beautiful music. They are popular with musical artists from around Gladios, and their natural call can be heard in pop songs from the region. If you hear what sounds like an orchestra in the wilderness, chances are it's actually a group of this Pokemon playing together. So the Gracklart and Bulugal line fill the niche of Pokemon designed for the evil team for my region. 
what do you think? And would any of them make your team? Let me know in the comments below. As for the evil team itself, uh, I wanted to explore what Pokemon might be used by them before I get off for the day. As for the grunts, I imagine they might use Pokemon li like the Papamal line, the Mohisson line, the Scraggy line, the Budo line, the Grackleart line, the Bulugal line, the Papuddle line, the Mr. Mime line, the Toxel line, the Swaddle line, the Pseudowoodo line, the Reptoderm line, and the Noctape line. Each either chosen because of their ability villainous or for their relation to self-expression through some form of art. Or they simply looked like Pokemon that would fit the general vibe that I was going for. As for the evil team admins, though I don't have names or full concepts or designs, I did want to block out the final teams for each of them, as I do know that. The quote-unquote art admin would use the final team of Levani, Golf Form Gastrodon, and Graffiti Bit, while the quote-unquote music admin admin would use the final team of Scriffscraft, Toxtricity, and Orchestral. I don't know if I will be creating any more admins, but uh, those are the ideas that I have so far. And I do have a very clear image regarding the evil team leader, but I'm, but I'm going to keep his team and general character concept a secret for now, as there's a fun twist that comes with that character. I will soon be making the human characters for the evil team, but not next time. No, I'm going to save that for a video in a longer stretch of time where I'm not going to be working on any Pokemon designs for the region, because maybe there will be some sort of contest going on. Hmm? Anyways, uh, but for right now, I think it's about time that I finish up these gym leaders. But that's for the future. For now, a special thanks to my patrons who are appearing on screen now and support the channel by making projects like this possible. If you would like to join them in their support, you can do so at the link in the description for as little as $3 a month. Thank you to all my patrons, and as always, thank you all for watching. If you liked this video, then leave a like, and if you want to see other videos like it, then subscribe, and turn on the bell to get notified when I upload next.